Hi everyone, my name is Marissa Myers and I am a practitioner researcher at the Hope Center for College Community and Justice. And today I will be talking to you for about six and a half minutes about uh, supporting students experiencing homelessness in higher education. The Hope Center for College Community and Justice is an action research center focused on food and housing insecurity among college students. For the last five years, we have conducted a national survey to identify the number of undergraduate and graduate students facing food and housing insecurity at two and four year institutions. Our most recent survey showed that 56% of respondents were housing insecure in the previous year and 17% were homeless. By conducting this survey, our hope is that colleges can use our work as a tool to reshape their practices while driving a national conversation about students' basic needs and security. While housing insecurity and homelessness affect students from all walks of life, there are many overrepresented subgroups in our data. These include student parents and returning citizens, foster youth, LGBTQ youth, low-income and first-gen students, older students, undocumented, and veterans. We figured out the problem, and now we want to know why this is happening. The new economics of college shows us that the college experience looks very different today. For starters, most family incomes are stagnant. Work doesn't pay like it used to. And last but not least, the safety net has been shredded. College prices are higher than ever, and many colleges are underfunded. Unfortunately, this means even the colleges who recognize and want to put an end to housing insecurity and homelessness are faced with very little funds to do so. Most people are familiar with the Maslow hierarchy of needs. As you can see, basic needs are the very foundation. However, we have historically neglected those needs when we talk about the typical college experiences. While this is often joked about, we now understand that students need to have their basic needs met in order to excel in college. We can talk about the problem all day long, but it's important to focus on long-term sustainable solutions. Solutions have to start from the foundation. It's nearly impossible to create systemic change without starting from the top. Amarillo College is an example of a college that has evolved programmatic work to advance cultural changes on campus. Their cultural change started at the top and faculty and staff have engaged along with students. They have a broad campus support and have instituted a culture of caring where every person on their campus is dedicated to ensuring students have secure housing and access to healthy food. One of the first things the college can do is appoint a director of student wellness and basic needs. This person should have a team that includes both staff members with case management skills and an individual who serves as a single point of contact for homeless students. The goal should be to refer students to support before they need to uh, face a crisis. It's also important to engage community organizations in the private sector in proactive rather than reactive support. A referral to a shelter is a crisis response. For example, in Tacoma, they offer Section 8 housing vouchers to college students before they have the chance to experience homelessness. There are many innovative ways to help students. Perhaps your college can develop a network of preferred landlords who will offer deeply discounted, time-limited rates on vacant apartments to students at risk of homelessness. Or maybe create a host home program in your community to help students find secure housing with great mentors. Students often become homeless or, experiencing, or experience housing insecurity when faced with emergencies. One of the quickest and most effective ways for schools to help with this issue is to establish an emergency aid fund to prevent issues like utilities being shut off or being evicted because you're $100 short of your rent, your rent this month. It's also important to get involved in government relations work and advocacy to influence policy. For example, free lunch should be expanded to higher education, but that won't happen without your help. 
we know that students get free lunch in K through 12. And so if you can get out there and vote and share a story, we might be able to make that happen. We talk a lot about housing vouchers, rent-free housing, host home programs, and other innovative programs, but they need to be combined with financial aid awareness and innovative financial aid metrics that accounts for the family's entire situation so they do have access to those great programs. Several financial aid questions on the FAFSA are geared towards homelessness, but many students don't know how to respond. These questions are complex and difficult to understand, so students often miss the opportunity to receive aid as, independ as an independent if they don't have someone to help them navigate their financial aid application. We have to ensure all needs are being met. If a student is homeless, it's likely they are often being faced with other biopsychosocial needs. The take up of public benefits is extremely low for college students. It's important to educate staff and faculty on how to help students apply for benefits. If a student is homeless or couch surfing, it's likely they don't, know, they don't have enough food to eat either. Some local examples that staff and faculty can do are providing winter and summer housing, fresh fruit and vegetable access, toiletries and school supplies, free to use computers, subsidized transportation services, but these are all provided by staff and faculty. In fact, sometimes the students can actually help out. Make this a big issue on your campus and you might get a food pantry or you might have, similar to Temple's campus, uh, a student government that runs a SNAP benefits access uh, workshop so that you can learn how to help students apply for uh, food stamps or SNAP benefits. It's not just the staff and faculty that can help, but college campuses as a whole. And remember, students are humans first. There are a few programs like the Dax House at DePaul that provides housing for homeless students, but we need to expand these programs and get more funding by showcasing the problem and elevating the voices of students experiencing homelessness. So what next? I gave you some solutions, but we have to expand on the resources that are already available as well. Focus on prevention and advertise, build new partnerships with food banks, childcare providers, mechanics, housing authorities, faith-based communities. Go out and partner with whoever you can and make it happen. Thanks everyone for having me today. I really appreciate uh, being a part of this uh, and have a great day.